will be consuming more oil uh, than we do here in the West. And of course, as some of you may know, they've long since been consuming more coal, more coal than we are consuming here in the West. And let me just say one you know, more brief thing about coal. I know I, I know I did mention this. We are seeing dramatic declines in U.S. coal consumption. We are seeing uh, efforts to export coal from the United States, uh, such as in my area from the Columbia River, uh, be, be uh, stymied and interrupted as environmental groups, you know, tend to, are tending to put a break on, on the export of coal. But unfortunately, the rate of coal consumption growth in the United in, in the world is happening at such a fast rate that even if we, uh, you know, even if we continue to uh, reduce our coal consumption here in North America, we're really not we're really not winning that game. So, so far, I've I've kind of painted a portrait of declining uh, oil and coal consumption here in the United States. And now I want to turn a little bit to some of the work that I've been doing over the last year, talking to city planning professionals, transportation professionals, other people uh, working to reconfigure uh, American cities. And before we do that, I just want to go to this one last image that we have here. I, I thought this was a, a fairly poignant image to, to just kick off. You can see that it's it's cutting off um, the ferry terminal, the very famous ferry terminal from Market Street. Um, it's it's uh, coming in and sort of cleaving the city uh, in this very uh, dense downtown uh, area. And it's really amazing to look at that photograph in 1962, 63, uh, what have you, because. This is exactly the kind of construction that was occurring in, at that time in the post-war era. The downtown Boston was bisected by one of these elevated freeways. Los Angeles um, was intersected, if you will, decimated, if you will, by all these freeways. And what's happening now in American cities is that Whereas in 1962 or 1963, these freeways were seen as an economic boom, now they're seen as a liability. Now they're seen as a way that, they're seen as a, as a, um, uh, they're seen as a liability that, that cuts cities in two, and, and some of you may know this Embarcadero Freeway is now down, it's completely revived this area of, of San Francisco. So, um, let me tell you now a little bit about what's happening in American cities as automobile use um, is in secular decline, and we are we are left with the legacy and the residue of all of this huge built infrastructure that we built in the post-war era, in, in where we invested in the uh, automobile. Um, one of the things, one of the um, uh, trends that I'm seeing that's very important here in North America now is that cities are doing their best. Oh, no. <laughs> we lost you. We probably can you hear us? Well, we can't hear you anyway. So. <laughs> Okay, so we got disconnected a little yeah. bit there. Yeah, we're, I think we're back. Okay. We don't have your video yet, but we'll see. Your video's not coming on, but you can go, keep going. Okay. Um, we, um, what we're seeing here in North America is that cities like Boston and Los Angeles are doing really the best job that they can to reconfigure, you know, to, to use the built environment, to use the existing environment, to, to, re, to rebuild and actually resurrect their cities and to provide their populations public transportation. So you may know that Boston actually got rid of its double-decker freeway in the same way that San Francisco did. And Boston actually has resurrected 
its historic uh, light rail and commuter rail. And in fact, I find this actually quite fascinating. Um, over a 40 to 50 year period, many of the rights of way and railway beds that were initially erected in, the, in these cities were actually never built over. So in cities like Boston and Los Angeles, we're actually we're actually restoring light rail in the exact same railway beds where they existed prior to World War II. Um, I was recently in Los Angeles uh, speaking to uh, bicycle advocates, transportation planners, uh, urban, urban developers in Los Angeles. As you might imagine, it is an enormous job to try to reconfigure a city like Los Angeles, which has spent 50 years investing in the automobile. But, you know, Los Angeles is actually rebuilding their light rail network. Um, you may know that Los Angeles had the biggest light rail network in the entire world up until about 1945. <coughs> They're restoring that light rail network on existing, on existing rail beds. So that's sort of my first point, and what I'm hearing from professionals. They're trying to use previous investment to reconfigure cities and to become more and to become more sustainable, and this is even as cities like Los Angeles are building um, huge amounts of solar uh, in in basin. Um, we've got very slow growth here in the United States, and and we don't have a lot of construction going on. So what you're seeing in cities is that we're having to use the existing built environment to slowly reconfigure ourselves in the post automobile era. Now the the second uh, issue that I'm hearing from a lot of professionals in American cities um, is that our streets are still a disaster. You know, our streets are, are, are still a disaster, and 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 many many cities like Los Angeles and even Seattle need to reconfigure their their streets and to and to actually use um, you know sustainable practices like we do here in Portland to um, plant up streets and use plantings and grasses and so forth to uh, you know, revive our streets because people are starting to become pedestrians again. Um, and then the, the sort of the final point that I wanted to make is that what we're, what, what we're really beginning to experience here in the United States is that the federal government is so large it really is unable to take a leadership position in the reconfiguration of our cities. And so it's actually the states and the mayors, the, the, the leaders of cities in the U.S. that are leading these initiatives. And the federal government has become the follower, if you, if you will. So to sort of put all this together, what I would... I guess the report I want to I want to give to you all is that America invested an extraordinary amount of capital and built an extraordinary amount of infrastructure over a 50-year period. And even though we're we're reducing our oil consumption and our coal consumption, we have this whole new project that's required to reconfigure and make our cities more green and sustainable. And uh, we'll get into more of these details in the in the in the Q and A.